Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I sure do have a lot of chest freezers here and the question often comes up, wouldn't it be cheaper to buy a walk-in freezer versus all these chest freezers? And I'm going to answer that question with this video. In order to compare energy consumption, I need data and I have this handy little device here. It's called a kilowatt meter and I don't know, these are available for like, I think they're less than $20. You plug it in to the outlet and you plug the device into it and then it on the screen here measures any watts consumption at any given moment and then uh, kilowatt hours it adds up for as long as it's been plugged in. So step one of my little experiment is I plug that meter into this freezer right here for 24 hours. This is a five foot five inch long freezer of standard dimensions and those standard dimensions are two foot three inches deep by two foot ten inches high. They all seem to come in that variety and then the size of the freezer is, freezer is really based on how long you get in those two fixed dimensions. So this freezer is pretty full of stuff. I left it on for one day and its running wattage was about 90 watts. I, these draw less than an amp when they're running. Of course they don't run all the time. They only run for a small portion of the day. They're 90 watts continuous running while they're running and they have a bigger startup draw. They actually draw about five times that when they first start up for just an instant when the motor starts up. So that's the power consumption of one of these. It's less than a kilowatt hour per day. Actually it came out to 0.89 kilowatt hours and it will vary according to weather. It's been between 40 and 70 degrees out and that was kind of the measurement zone. We have colder weather where they don't run as much. We have hotter weather where they run more. I consider this kind of an average. It was a good time to test it. Now I have 10 of these chest freezers and one used one kilowatt hour per day. So I could say roughly these 10 use 10 kilowatt hours per day. I pay about 10 cents per kilowatt hour for electricity. And if you go through the math, that works out to about $32 per year, 318 kilowatt hours per year to run these 10 freezers. One thing I found, because I've measured power consumption on more than just this one over the years when I've had them, is that the small ones use about the same amount of power as the big ones. I actually think they use the same compressor and refrigeration unit no matter the size of them from a little two and a half footer all the way up to a seven footer. They seem to draw about the same amount of power. And the last piece of data I need to compare the two options is how many cubic feet of storage that I need. Well for these 10 freezers I added it all up and did some math and I have 331.24 cubic feet total of storage space in all these freezers and that's measured on the outside of the freezer so I actually have less than that but I'm going to use outside to outside for both options just to be apples to apples. How big would a walk-in freezer need to be to accommodate all this stuff and it turns out that an eight foot by eight foot by eight foot tall walk-in freezer would be roughly the same storage space. If I go to the outside dimensions again, I come up with 512 cubic feet in an eight foot by eight foot by eight foot walk-in freezer. And I have to take out an aisle space in the middle of the freezer because of course I can't just stack the whole thing full like I do a chest freezer. I have to leave a walk-in aisle so I can access things that are stacked on either side. After you subtract a two foot aisle that goes from the front to the back of the freezer, I wind up with 384 cubic feet of usable space in an eight foot by eight foot by eight foot walk-in freezer. I needed 331, so eight foot by eight foot by eight foot is the freezer size for me. To compare power consumption, I don't have a walk-in freezer that I can stick my watt meter onto and measure consumption, so I had to go online and look up at a couple places how much power a walk-in freezer uses. It turns out on average a walk-in freezer uses about 8,000 kilowatt hours per year for an 8 foot by 8 foot by 8 foot unit compared to my chest freezers which use 3,180 kilowatt hours per year. My 10 chest freezers use about half as much power as an equivalent walk-in freezer. Why is this? Well, there's a bunch of reasons that I know of and a bunch of reasons I probably don't know of. But the first thing I think of is how tightly sealed these guys are. This is all one piece construction down in here and it's all blown full of 
um, insulation and there are no seams in it so it's very airtight and when the lids closed it's very airtight and when you open the lid the cool air which is more dense than warm air tends to stay in the freezer instead of spilling out like it would when you open the door of a walk-in freezer. In comparison, a walk-in freezer is usually built on site out of a kit of pieces and those pieces have joints between them. And of course they get better and better at sealing up those joints, but the joints are still there and that's a potential place for air to leak in and out and affect the efficiency. Also the door seals on the outside and one of the big things I thought of is that a uh, walk-in freezer has a blower motor or fan on both the evaporator side of the freezer inside the freezer to blow the cold air around the freezer and it has a fan up on the condensing unit on top of the freezer to blow the hot air out from the refrigeration process whereas a chest freezer is radiative so the evaporator coils are actually in the walls of the freezer there's no fan running to distribute the the coldness in the freezer it's just sucked in by the, the heat sucked in by the coil so it's inherently a more efficient process than blowing air around so the conclusion I came to after measuring the data is that yes chest freezers are quite a bit more efficient to me and I used a worst case scenario when I measured the consumption of my freezers. I assumed that all 10 of them were on all year long and they're not. One of the nice things about chest freezers is if you empty one out you can just shut it off until you need it again. We're running at maximum capacity with all of them full right now because it's fall butcher season. When it comes to spring most of these will be turned off so a percentage of them don't run for part of the year making them even cheaper to run. Using chest freezers over a walk-in freezer have lots of different advantages that I'll go through. I talked about modularity and being able to shut one down. That also applies during a power outage. So if the power goes out here, I don't necessarily need to power all these at once. I can cycle a small emergency generator through them. And we have a little 3,000 watt emergency generator that we've never had to use because power's never been out long enough to become an issue. But if we had to, we could hook it up to three or four of these at a time, power them for a while, get them cooled down, then switch it and hook up the other ones. It could run all of them at once except for that big startup draw that you get for a split second when the motor starts up and it starts the cooling cycle. So it's a real advantage. I can power these with a little um, 120 volt emergency generator if I had an 8x8x8 8 8 8 walk-in freezer it would be 240 volts and it would probably require a larger emergency generator to kick on and off that freezer. These chest freezers are also modularly redundant. In other words if one of them breaks down most times of the year I have enough space in other ones to transfer the contents of the bad one into the other ones versus a walk-in freezer assuming I have a single cooling system on that walk-in freezer if that goes down I'm out of luck I've lost my freezer capacity so I've never had one of these go down in eight years that we've been running all these I've never had a problem with any of them if one were to go down another nice thing is that they hold the cold for a long time because they're so tight and well insulated that it's not like I need to know right away that that one went down. I can just come in once a day, look at the lights on them, make sure they're all still running, open the doors, and I'm good to go. I have efficient space usage with these, so I can pile these right up full of whatever I'm storing, either as loose product or as butcher boxes like this one's full of. And if I need to access something in these, I can access it fairly easily. If it's butcher boxes, I can pull out a box or two to get to whatever I need. Most of it is spread out on the top. Or if it's something loose, like the chickens I have in these other freezers, I can just reach in and pull a chicken out. If I have a walk-in freezer, I'm probably dealing with shelves on either side. And I have to come up with a way to be very efficient with what I store on those shelves so that I can both easily access it and have no space wasted in order to get the equivalent volume. It's a trick. I'm sure it can be done, but it's a lot easier to just reach in and pull something out of a, out of a reach-in chest freezer. Two other considerations that aren't so clear. Number one, total space usage, and number two, 
cost to purchase new. These big freezers, I believe, it's been a while since I bought them, but I think they were seven to eight hundred dollars each new. So say I had ten big ones, although I don't, some of them are smaller, that would be about seven to eight thousand dollars worth of chest freezers. I believe that a new walk-in freezer is roughly that price but I don't really know. I know that I looked at a used one three or four years ago and that was $5,000 and it was, it was pretty used. So I think we're roughly in the same ballpark for one versus the other for equivalent storage space. The one thing that I can think of where the walk-in freezer really stands head and shoulders above chest freezers is in total space used because Obviously, I've got a lot of empty space up here that's kind of wasted space, and I have a lot of aisleways working between them. If I had the equivalent storage space in an 8x8x8 eight by eight by eight <laughs> walk-in freezer, it'd just be tucked over in the corner here, and I'd have all this space free. So from that standpoint, the walk-in freezer has an advantage. And as a final note, I think that the scale would tip more toward the walk-in freezer for uh, total energy consumption if I were storing a lot more food. I've read, and I don't have the data to support it, that if I were at roughly 20 chest freezers, then a walk-in freezer would make more sense from an energy consumption standpoint as well. So there, all you ever wanted to know, plus a whole lot more about chest freezers and walk-in freezers. I hope this video was useful, and I'll see you next time.